Almost everyone has heard of Sanger sequencing, but not everyone knows about some of the other types of fragment analysis studies you can perform on the same instrument. I have Steve Jackson here with me, who's an application scientist. Tell us a little bit more about some of the applications you can run on the Seek Studio. Thanks for joining me, Steve. Of course. So tell me a little bit about what you've been working on and some of the key applications you can run on the Seek Studio. Right, so you mentioned sequencing, and that right. remains a big part of what our customers are going to be able to do with, with the Seek Studio instrument. Um, we have a number of different options or different modules that we're emphasizing for sequencing. Mm -hmm. First of these is going to be plasmid confirmation. Okay. So you just want to uh, um, sequence a clone that you have made, a subclone, or you have a sequence that you have put into a plasmid. Um, the Seek Studio allows you to very quickly and very easily get information about what sequence has been in your subclone there. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, a cloud application that allows you to monitor the quality of your sequencing reactions and uh, it outputs the sequence very easy. So we've, we've made that very easy for our customers. Right. Another application that we're kind of emphasizing is oncology research. Okay. okay so we have um, uh, running modules on Seek Studio which have been optimized for using fragmented DNA you get from FFPE material. Mm -hmm. um, this allows investigators then to very quickly um, look at amplicons of about 100 to 150 nucleotides long and get information about, um, about uh, on particular oncogenes or mutations that might be in a particular tumor sample, that right. sort of thing, and confirm that, that you know, the, uh, the mutation that they might think is present actually is present. We have a other, couple of other tools that help them with that. Mm -hmm. One is Minor Variant Finder, which mm -hmm. is a, a tool that allows them to look at Sanger sequencing traces and look for allelic variants that are present at about 5% frequency. Oh. So they can go down to very low frequencies and, and see that there is a uh, mutation in a tumor sample that is you know, not very well represented. Um, and the other thing is we have a next-gen confirmation uh, module available as well, where mm -hmm. customers can take their next-gen sequencing results they might have done from a discovery-based experiment where they get you know, uh, information about you know, um, a lot of different genes in, in a tumor, and then they can verify that those particular mutations are present using the next-gen confirmation module mm -hmm. and Sanger sequencing on the same amplicons. We've made that very easy for people. Wow, that's, that's pretty exciting. But So can you tell me a little bit about some of the other applications on, let's say, for fragment analysis, like Snapshot, MLPA? Right, so uh, one of the things we're excited about is a cell line authentication application. Um, this is an important application that allows customers to verify that the cells that they're working on mm -hmm. are actually what they think they are. For example, that they haven't had a HeLa cell line overgrow you know, right. their, their mouse cells or something like that. So um, we have uh, a put together with our HID team, the human identification team, couple of different options for customers mm -hmm. um, that can use fragment analysis to verify that the cells they have on their plate are actually what they think they are. That's so important. It's very easy and, and very simple for them to, to do. Yeah. Um, we still have the snapshot available. It's been mm -hmm. something that we've had available for a long time. Snapshot allows customers to, to query particular uh, uh, loci, particular regions for a particular mutation. Mm -hmm. um, and they can do that by fragment analysis as well. Okay. Um, with our multiplex option for snapshot, they can then analyze a large number of different um, uh, potential uh, mutational changes at one right. time with the snapshot kit. Okay. Um, we also have something called multiplex uh, ligation um, proximity assay, okay. you know, MLPA, right. um, which is something that customers use for doing copy number variability analyses okay. uh, um, by fragment analysis. This wow. allows them to, to very quickly see whether or not a particular uh, a gene or locus has a large portion or a small portion even right. deleted um, by fragment analysis. So there are kits available for doing that and we have uh, again, shown that the Seek Studios were used for that sort of thing. That's a broad range of applications, right? Yeah, it's and there's one, one that I would like to mention. So, of course, everybody has heard about uh, genome editing, CRISPR analysis. Right, of course. Uh, so, a very big deal about about uh, you know um, genome anal or genome editing analyses is being able to quantify how efficient was your genome edit. Sure. Uh, on Seek Studio, you can do that with Sanger sequencing. You mm -hmm. get the, the, the traces and put it into software that allows customers to see how efficient a genome edit was a particular region there. So right. uh, again, we're kind of helping them um, ease their analysis of genome editing experiments. Right, along with genome editing, um, what about species identification? Uh, that's a good question. So uh, we have uh, shown that the, the MicroSeq ID kit, which has been used for a long time for identifying bacterial species mm -hmm. um, by, by uh, sequencing the 16S subunit uh, sub region, um, that can also be used on Seek Studio. So customers okay. can use the MicroSeq kit um, and uh, we're, we're, we're learning that the, the output from Seek Studio can be used to, to query the, the MicroSeq database as well. 
we have a, another option is, is like for looking at uh, uh, eukaryotic species mm -hmm. uh, by using the barcode of life type experiments. Right. Uh, and so, for example, if you want to see if your you know the sushi that you ordered is correct or right. the meat that you have <laughs> is not horse meat, sure. um, you can use the, the barcode of life type of experimentation on Seek Studio right. to get sequence uh, um, identifications and show that they're actually the species that you think they should be. Yeah, I think that's very important. <laughs> so, tell me a little bit about some of the customers who are transitioning from some of our previous instruments. Is there Anything they need to do, let's say, differently with the Seek Studio? No. Um, no, actually, you know, uh, there there really isn't anything that, that, that is, is different. So we, we've made sure that the workflows that go uh, up up front of the Seek Studio okay. are exactly the same. So uh, the the big die uh, um, uh, workflows that they've been using and the fragment analysis workflows, all that is exactly the same as they mm -hmm. go go into Seek Studio. So all all the upstream stuff is is the sample prep compatible. is the same. Exactly the same. Got it. Um, the, the only thing that's, that's different is that we've made the Seek Studio easier to use so sure. that they can set up their runs and analyze their runs in a lot faster time than, than they could on the other instruments. Yeah. And the quality of data they get out of Seek Studio is equivalent, if not somewhat better, than some of the instruments as well. So, right. so customers can have the confidence that, that what they get as an output on Seek Studio is going to be equivalent to what they've been getting on their other uh, legacy instruments as well. Okay. And Steve, where can they find more information? So uh, they can go to this thing called the web, okay, and then go to <laughs> thermofisher.com slash seekstudio, and they can, yes. they can learn more about the applications that we have available. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. As you heard, for more information, please visit us at thermofisher.com forward slash seekstudio. Thank you so much for joining us.